Hey everyone, I hope you all had a wonderful week. Today I decided that I'm gonna do the Q&A. So you ask a lot of questions on Instagram, on the art community, on YouTube. So I tried to answer all the questions today. And to be honest, I haven't sort them. So I just put all the questions in one note file and send it to me on my phone. And I haven't even read all the questions yet. So I think it's gonna be interesting. Not everything is art related, so um, so be it. All right, what are your current long-term goals for your art career? So right now I am concept environment artist at VUGA and I still try to get better with my design skills. So I do a lot of designs just for myself because I believe I still have a lot of space to grow there. Besides that, I'm trying to get better with everything else because the industry never stops and you always have to sharpen your axe, you always have to work on your stuff. When it comes to work, I'm very happy at VUGA right now. For now, I still plan to stay at VUGA. I really like the people and the work environment. Also with COVID, everything had changed. There is nothing in particular which I planned big of a step yet, but um, let's see. Do you often feel too tired after your studio job to do personal art? Do you have any trick to stay motivated yes I always feel tired after my studio job but I try to be very disciplined I get this question very often and what I always would recommend if you want to do something after work plan it ahead so plan your next day what do you want to do after work and take a little bit of rest in between so let's say you finish your day job at 6 take a break get some food take a rest but not too much that you get too tired of resting and getting low in this resting phase maybe 30 minutes 45 minutes and then try to do something Thing, depending on how stressful your day was so if you had a very stressful day at work it doesn't make sense to start any complex task later on on motivation it's just a long-term thing so what is your what is your goal what do you want to achieve you know if you don't have a goal if you don't have something where you want to go it's going to be very hard for you to stay motivated also you constantly need to self-reflect are you on the right track and uh, that's why milestones are super important it could be finishing a painting in 10 days could be finishing a drawing in five days be realistic and and scale it up for yourself. Maybe you plan a week for a painting, but maybe the week was very bad for you. You had to do a lot of extra work, your mom wants something from you. You never know these variables. So I would always be fair to yourself and say, okay, I give myself a week, but if it's take a week longer, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's not a paid job. And in terms of motivation, I just enjoy what I do. If you don't enjoy what you do, maybe consider to do something else. Man, on your football pictures, you look big. What were your stats compared to now? Bench press, squat, and deadlift. <laughs> on those images of the last video, I believe I was around 130 kilograms. And pff, my my stats, oh, I, I, I don't remember. So right now I'm 107 kilograms. My bench press, so I, I don't know my bench press max because I never did that. I'm also not a good bench presser. I don't know, I do 110 kilograms for reps right now. I don't know what's that in, in pounds, 250 pounds, I believe. I'm also, I don't train so heavy anymore because of joints and getting older and stuff. Right now, I don't know, when I do deadlifts, I just do it with 160 kilograms. I don't know what that is. 400 pounds or something and squat I don't do also so heavy anymore so I don't know also 150 kilograms 400 three something 300 400 pounds in between and when I was playing American football actively I think the heaviest I squatted was 220 so 220 kilograms and the heaviest I deadlift was not much 260 kilograms I don't know what's that in pounds 500 pounds or something yeah all right next one what's your favorite color um I would say either blue or black, which isn't the color, but uh, yeah, blue or black. Which artists were an inspiration for you when you started to learn drawing and painting? Most of them are by uh, Karl Blechen, uh, Turner, Caravaggio, Da Vinci, Michelangelo, uh, Zorn, Sargent. Okay, that's a long one. Hey, how do you decide when there is enough detail in an image and how add detail to the background, center and foreground? Thank you so much. How I like to do it, I'm basically focusing on the focal point. So if my focal point or the point of story I want to tell in the image gets enough detail, I would make a hierarchy of detailing afterwards. So everything should support the focal point. The eye is directly going to that focal point. Do you think age is important when starting with art? No, nope, it's not important. When I started, I was 23. My mom became an artist when she was 40. I believe age is really not a component. Your life circumstances are components. If you have kids, if you have the time to do that, if you have certain 
things you have to take care. Yes, these are certain components, but age is never, never a reason for not starting your art career. Next question, how well rendered? Should we make an environment concept art to show in our portfolio? Like I was watching some concept art pieces of Assassin's Creed Valhalla and they were roughly painted with large brush strokes, but I was thinking that how well rendered a concept art we should make so that can be used by other artists. Um, okay, so I think your question is how much you should spend time on uh, pushing the your work in your portfolio um, to a certain degree because you have seen that the Assassin's Creed concept was a little bit more rough painted. That's a, that's a very good question. That's a very valid question. I would always recommend to any student or anyone who wants to get a job or wants to get, get hired, you should spend as much time to push the image to the highest quality as you can always because what you want to show is that you are capable of pushing an image to a certain quality which is very important also you always get judged by your worst piece so that's why it's important in the beginning at least to show that you can push the image to a really good level. When it comes to production work, sometimes in production you only have a certain amount of time. It can happen that you're on a project where you only have one day to make a painting. So uh, you should never judge that in that way because it can be that all the Assassin's Creed Valhalla paintings are all made in one day. And if you scale that down on one day, it's actually really freaking good. Never be influenced by that. And I would say also on top of that, never compare yourself because it's not fair enough to yourself. And it also doesn't make sense. You never know what is behind all that. If you see a really well painted image and it's painted by five different artists or it's painted by one artist but five other artists had their hands on that. So you never can really judge that. So what is important for you if you want to get a job or if you want to get a good piece or your good portfolio, spend as much time as you can to push the quality of your image. I hope that helps you. What's your favorite food? Um, probably chicken, I would say. Chicken, rice. Chicken, rice and broccoli. <laughs> that combination. <laughs> Those questions are really, really cool. If you could travel back in time to work on one game title, which would it be and why? Let's say if I travel back in time and I have the skills to work as a concept artist, then it would probably be Morrowind, Gothic 2 or God of War. We have so many questions. Do you carry any specific value or attitude that helps define who you are and what you do and why? So it's like three questions. So I would definitely say that my parents had a very big influence on me as a person. My parents are both entrepreneurs. Every time when my parents got a certain book, they always tossed it to me afterwards and they wanted me to read it. And it were like a lot of entrepreneur books, motivation books. What I believe which forged my character the most was definitely American football. I learned about discipline, hard work, work working in a team, working together with people. Where do you teach and would you ever consider in giving a mentorship or private lessons? Thanks. I'm not teaching right now at a certain place. I'm only teaching online at Skillshare. And yes, I have a mentorship. Not many people are aware of it. I don't advertise it because I believe if someone wants to get mentored a private lesson, they will find me, they will Google me, and then eventually they will find my mentorship. Only take 10 students in total. I only have four spots left. So if you want to check that out, there's a link in the description. Um, is it practical and to learn fast if I tackle two fundamentals, anatomy and composition, that correlates at the same time by studying smartly. What I mean by studying smart is by using mental models like Pareto principle, the famous technique, etc., to increase the efficiency of my learning. Absolutely. Like also things like composition are not only in landscapes. Composition is everywhere. If you design certain detail on a character, it's also in a certain composition, it's a, it's a certain rhythm. So you will see that those principles are coming back and back and back again. What made you get into YouTube? What are your pure goals? Oh. Um, different stuff. I like documenting myself and documenting my my journey, my process. Um, I thought it would be a great opportunity just to document my current process, my growth process, and also to have something to give back, you know? Because I I found concept art over YouTube video of Feng Zhu. My main goal for the YouTube channel is to build up our community. And we already 150 people in the community, which I'm very proud of. YouTube is a very, very slow process if you not have the magic of the algorithm that one of your videos get picked up and you get boosted or something, you know? For me right now, the goal 
goal is just to continuously having the interaction with the community, bringing out content, but I also try to not forget to grow as an artist. Sometimes I completely underestimate how much time it, it, it takes to make a video because you spend a lot of time on prepping, scripting, then editing, then also promoting it when it comes out and then the video comes out and after the video comes out you're also answering all the comments and everything to push it up in the algorithm so it's really a lot of work and if you want to do something like that um, you should definitely be aware something like YouTube is really really a lot of work and gonna take a lot of time away from you and my current goals are actually at least to publish one to two videos per month and um, having all weekly live streams and growing of course my next milestone is 10k and we have 2700 or something subs right now it's a process getting my first thousand subscribers took me almost one year and now we almost tripled it in only a half year so that's really how youtube is hey anosh i would be interested in your approach to goal setting while you were self-studying what kind of milestones did you set and what was the time frame for them thanks a bunch for all the stuff you do really helps a lot so very simple actually i heard someone say Saying that it needs 10,000 hours to become an artist um, to, to learn the skills and that equals five years so I thought okay I started zero I will gonna take five years for that and I felt okay how can I give myself time studying makes sense in Germany when you study at the end you also have a degree so it helps maybe if you want to go abroad to work somewhere and to get a working visa so it, it made a lot of sense so my first goal was just study something it wasn't particular industrial design because I also applied for other stuff my goal was really just to study something in the direction of design. And, and my plan was always getting into college, study, and after college, getting a job. So my ultimate goal was having a job in the industry after five years. And in, in those five years, I was, I was trying to think, okay, what is the most logical step for me? So my first step was to, to get the fundamentals ready. I wanted to finish images to see how far I can push it. I understood very fast, okay, these are the core principles, the, the core basic values, so they stack on top. And I said myself after six months, okay, I want to finish one good image. That was a small milestone. And a bigger milestone was, for example, getting an internship while studying, because I believed if I will achieve to be in a studio as an intern while I'm studying, then it's going to be easier for me for the next step on getting a job in the industry. And another point on self-studying, I know there are many resources out there, um, which is very hard because you have to you have to filter what is actually necessary for you. So what I would recommend is maybe finding study groups, communities, or maybe if you have the money, also maybe a mentorship. Because I believe like a, like a private mentorship these days, there's so many good mentors out there. There's definitely one who can help you because a mentor can technically look at what are the things you know what are the things you don't know and then he can push the right buttons and tell you okay you have to do this and this and that and give you assignment last but not least question do you paint traditional and what medium do you use um, no I don't paint traditional anymore um, or not right now because I just don't have time for that I did a lot of gouache and watercolor paintings when I was studying that was very cool I haven't done any traditional painting for a long time and I believe when I get older I get rid of all the digital digital stuff and I just gonna put myself into a cabin in the woods with a canvas and paints and then I just gonna paint like an old old man. Alrighty, um, thank you so much for all your questions. I hope I could answer them. Um, if you have more questions, feel free to follow me on my Instagram or to write a question down below in the video description. Feel free to like, subscribe and share the video if you like the video. Make sure to check out our weekly streams and uh, see you soon in the next video. Ciao, ciao.